Hi, I'm Craig. This video focuses on the journey to financial independence. Financial independence is where you make enough money from passive income sources to meet your family's needs. Many people achieve financial independence after a 30 or 40 year career. Individuals and families with high savings rates may be able to achieve financial independence earlier. This video focuses on teaching you how to use the lifetime investment calculator to model a family's journey to financial independence using the sequence of returns from 1970 to present. This family makes just over $68,000 per year, which is the 2019 US median household income. There are two income earners, uh, both aged 30. After taxes, they make $58,000 and they have an annual household expense of $45,000 per year. So their current savings rate is that 13K uh, gap between after tax savings and their expenses, plus a 5% employer match. In order to achieve financial independence using a moderate withdrawal rate of 4%, they would need $1.125 million in today's dollars. So if they were to retire right now, that, that would be the number that they would be shooting for. With a conservative withdrawal rate of 3% per year, they would need 1.5 million to pull out the $45,000 per year. But this family isn't gonna achieve financial independence you know, today. So we have to account for inflation I don't know exactly how long it'll take them to achieve it, but a 3% inflation rate over 20 years would turn that $45,000 into needing $81,000 per year in income. As a result, their moderate 4% withdrawal rate, their financial, and indep uh, their financial independent number is just over $2 million. So it's 2 million and 25,000, or with a 3% withdrawal rate, they would need $2.7 million. So we'll go ahead and shift over to the calculator. Now, my goal here is to go over the role of inflation, the different strategies, uh, show a little bit about luck, and define you know, how the journey changes with different equity and fixed income allocations. As always, I start with the default view, and I'm going to get rid of some of the noise here. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the additional uh, stock and bond allocations. So we're only showing 100% stocks and 0% bonds. The starting value for this family is gonna be $0. They've got nothing today. And I'm just gonna roughly put a, a contribution duration of 30 years. I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take in this scenario. Our contribution amount is their current savings rate, which is $16,435, okay. Right, and I want to scale those contributions with inflation. Oh, as always, we'll start with the S&P 500. That's our baseline. So if this family was invested in the S&P 500, 100% stocks, 0% bonds, uh, this is how it would perform. Now, looking at the data, first, it's interesting, when we start in 1970, how much this, uh, how much inflation impacts their contribution. So their 1970s and 80s were some years where there was a large inflation. So this $16,000 over a 30 year period, uh, at the end of 30 years, they would have to be contributing $67,000 uh, to be able to contribute the same value, I guess, as 16,435, All right? So the journey here, uh, it's interesting to see the role of inflation, and this number will change over time. Uh, so as we change the sequence, the start year in the sequence of returns, you'll see that inflation uh, doesn't have as big of an impact. We'll, visit, we'll revisit that in a minute. So now going down, tracing down to the end of year balance, we can see if this family was 100% stocks and 0% bonds in the S&P 500, it would take them, let's see, we're looking for two, just over $2 million between 19 and 20 years, uh, starting in 1970, for them to reach their financial independence. Note, of course, that their contributions at that point are about $45,000 or $50,000. Now, I'm going to flip over to a different strategy, right? We're going to change, and we're going to shift to the four fund US strategy and see how that would have performed starting in 1970. Again, we're gonna track down the end of year balance and looking for that $2 million, it would have taken 16 to 17 years. 
So we chopped off, you know, three to four years just because we chose a diversified strategy uh, outside of the S&P 500. I'll do one other here and you can see uh, jumping over to small, all small cap value worldwide, starting in 1970, to get that $2 million, we're looking at 14 to 15 years, starting in uh, 1970 with the sequence of returns. Small cap value, of course, is very volatile. Uh, so the journey uh, would have been uh, interesting, I guess I should say. Uh, but you can see that that was the, the quickest that this family could achieve financial independence. I'm gonna flip back to the S&P 500 strategy, and I'm gonna change the first sequence here, right? Uh, let's say that this family was incredibly lucky. So they're gonna start in 1975, where the S&P 500 had uh, a, a series of pretty good markets. And so in 1975, in the S&P 500, it would have taken them 17 to 18 years to achieve their financial independence. So in this case, they got lucky, right? And they shaved off two years or a year or two from their, uh, for the, from their original uh, allocation. Forgive me, from their original uh, starting year. Now, what if, I, what if I change this family to start in uh, the year 2000, right? So they started their financial independence journey in one of the worst uh, market, you know, S one of the worst markets for the S and P 500 in recent history. So tracking this down, remember 2000 through 2003, we're losing years in the S and P 500, and then we had the 2008 financial crisis, where the S and P 100 dropped 41 uh, percent. So in this scenario, this family was quite unlucky. And you can see that it took 27 to 28 years for them to reach that, uh, for, to, to reach that number. Of course, you can see that we've looped here at the 21st year to go back from 2020 to 1970, right? We did this on purpose so that you could see, you know, th that the journey, you know, with the data that we have, it ended at $1.4 million after 20 years, but that wasn't enough. Um, so if the returns were to continue uh, using looping, you can see that you know, it's well over 20 years to be able to reach that financial independence number. And then at that time, is that enough money? So let's look at this. Uh, you know, All of the inflation here is accounted for. So let's shift over and in year 28, we'll see what 4% of $2.4 million is. So I'll shift over and my first distribution year is gonna be year 28. And I'm gonna do a 4% distribution. I'm going to pull fixed uh, starting value. And in this first year of year 28, I was gonna pull $76,000 out. So 4% of that, that uh, $1.9 million is $76,000. Now, the question is, would that be enough to live off of, given the role of inflation for these 28 years? To determine that, you could flip between nominal and real. So we'll shift over to real. And at uh, given all the inflation that's taken place during this period, it's about $45,000. So that's right the target where we need to be. So in this scenario, it would have taken the family about 28 years, and they would have had enough purchasing power as if they uh, had $45,000 at the beginning of the sequence of returns. So you can really see how adjusting the strategy, adjusting the sequence of returns to show the role of luck, right? You could, uh, you know, in this scenario, the family started in a bear market where the S&P 500 didn't make much for the first decade. You could adjust that where maybe they were to retire into the bear market, right? That's another scenario that you could run just by toggling these parameters on the right-hand side. You can see that the journey took anywhere between 14 and 28 years based off of what I showed you uh, with this increasing contribution amount per year. Note also, I think we were after 30 years, 
uh, starting in 1970, you can see that the, the last contribution uh, is $39,000 if we started in the year 2000, but in 1970, I think it was around $67,000. So the role of inflation on the contributions is very large uh, in this calculation. The last thing that I wanted to show is adjusting for the equity and fixed income allocation. So we have 100% stocks and bonds. That's what we've been looking at so far. I'm going to add a 60-40 split so that we could see the journey between the two. Of course, I need to reset a couple of variables here. There are parameters on the right-hand side. So I'll flip back to nominal. I will go back to 1970. Okay. And then I'm going to just go back to the growth chart. So I'm going to, for the distribution, I'm going to hit don't calculate. So I wanted to do, show you how to do a direct comparison between the, the two different 100% stock allocation and a 60% stock allocation. So here again, we're in the S&P 500. And to reach $2 million, we're looking at 19 to 20 years in both scenarios, right? In 100% stock allocation, now looking, tra tracking down the end of year balance for a 60% stock allocation, you can see the destination is about the same, right? 19 to 20 years to reach that $2 million mark. At the end of 20 years, you can see that it was 2.3 million instead of 2.6, but let's look at the journey, right? In the big losing years, 73 and 74, if you were 100% in this S&P 500, you lost 18% and 33% respectively. But if you were in a 60% stock allocation, you lost 8.6% instead of 18 and 17.4% instead of 33, right? These numbers, you know, so at the end of the year, you had $81,000 in your account at the end of 1974 instead of $66,000 year, in your account. Uh, so that's a very big, that's telling uh, of that journey. Moving down, we don't have a losing year in 1981 uh, and we have a, a gaining year in uh, 1990. So you can see that the journey, when you add bonds to your portfolio in this scenario, the destination is the same. You still reach financial independence at the same time, but the journey isn't as volatile, right? The lows aren't as low. And of course the highs aren't as high. So in 1975, you had a 32% gain uh, because you were in 60% stocks. And if you were 100% stocks, you'd have a 49% gain. You can do this for any of the strategies. You know, you can flip over to the US for or the four fund US and see how that would have played out. And so this, you can use this to see, you know, what is your risk tolerance? Uh, if you know it's going to take you 19 to 20 years to achieve financial independence uh, using the strategy that you choose, you know, do you want to start up front with a more risky stock and bond allocation? Probably. Um, do you want to adjust that over time to a more conservative stock and bond allocation? Right? These are some of the levers that you can pull. And if you look at the past, you can uh, better understand, you know, what would have played out if you were uh, in this time and using this sequence of returns. So thank you so much for, for joining. Uh, I showed in this video the role of inflation, uh, how to toggle and view different strategies, uh, luck based off of the sequence of returns that you, you happened to get starting in 1970, uh, 1975, you could do any year within the sequence of known returns. And I showed the differences in equity and fixed income and how that has a, has a role in the journey. Uh, you know, starting, I guess, in 1970, but showing the volatility being 100% stocks versus 60% uh, stocks. Please feel free to share any feedback. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that we can continue this journey together. Take care.